Now, let us see the features of posterior cranial fossa. As you can see here, this is the largest of the cranial fossae. It is bounded anteriorly in the median plane by dorsum cellae, on either sides by the superior margin of the petrous part of temporal bone, and behind and laterally by the squamous parts of occipital bone. Let us see the features of posterior cranial fossa from anterior to posterior. So in the median plane is a quadrangular plate of bone which is a part of the sphenoid bone. This is called as dorsum cellae. At its suprolateral angle are two projections which are called as posterior clenoid process. The posterior clenoid processes along with the superior margin of the petrous part of temporal bone gives attachment to the attached margin of tentorium cerebelli. The free margin of the tentorium cerebelli will attach to the anterior clenoid process. There is a triangular interval between the attached and free margins of the tentorium cerebelli. This triangular interval is called as the oculomotor trigone that is pierced by oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerve. Below and lateral to the posterior clenoid process will be two tubercles which will be connected to the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone by a ligament which is partially calcified in this skull. This ligament is called as petrosphenoid ligament of Gruber. Under this ligament will be a tunnel which is called as Dorello's canal which transmits the abducent nerve to the cavernous sinus. If we trace dorsum cellae downwards, we will see a sloping surface of bone. This is called as clivus which is formed in the anterior part by basi sphenoid and in the posterior part by basi occiput and this joint is formed and fused by 25 years of age. The clivus gives attachment to various ligaments from above downwards they are membrana tectoria, superior band of the cruciform ligament and apical ligament of dense. These ligaments are separated from the brainstem which will be passing through the foramen magnum by basilar venous plexus and the vertebro basilar system of vessels as well as pontine system. Behind the clivus is the largest opening of the cranial fossae. This is the largest opening of the skull. This foramen is called as foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is divided by a transverse ligament into two compartments. The anterior compartment will be called as osseoligamentous compartment. It transmits the apex of the dense and the ligaments attached to it. The posterior compartment is called as neurovascular compartment because it transmits the medulla surrounded by the meninges, spinal vessels and the spinal part of accessory nerve. Posterior to foramen magnum this surface is formed by the squamous part of occipital bone. The most characteristic feature on this is a midline projection. This corresponds to the external occipital protuberance on the outside. This elevation is called as internal occipital protuberance. Diverging from the internal occipital protuberance on either side is a transverse sulcus with two raised margins. The lips of the transverse sulcus give attachment to the tentorium cerebelli and the sulcus lodges the right and left transverse sinuses that meet at a common sinus in relation to internal occipital protuberance which is called as confluence of sinuses or torcular herophily. If you trace from the internal occipital protuberance downwards, we can see the internal occipital crest which diverges to form a fossa called as the vermian fossa that lodges the inferior cerebellar vermis.
Be below the level of transverse sulcus, posterior cranial fossa lodges the cerebellum and above it lodges the occipital lobes of the cerebrum. So below it is also called as cerebellar fossa. If we trace from the transverse sulcus laterally, it continues below the petrous part of temporal bone as an S-shaped sulcus. This is called as the sigmoid sulcus that lodges the sigmoid sinus which is a continuation of the transverse sinus. If we trace the sigmoid sulcus still lower down, it terminates at a flask shaped foramen which is called as the jugular foramen. The jugular foramen is divided arbitrarily into three compartments, an anteromedial, intermediate and a posterolateral compartment. The posterolateral compartment contains the sigmoid sinus which passes through the compartment and continues as the internal jugular vein at its superior bulb. The intermediate compartment will transmit glossopharyngeal, vagus and accessory nerves out of the posterior cranial fossa. The anteromedial compartment will transmit the inferior petrosal sinus which is the first tributary of the internal jugular vein. This is the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus which will pass through the anteromedial compartment to drain into the internal jugular vein. Now let us see the features on the posterior surface of the petrous part of temporal bone. The most prominent feature is this foramen. This foramen is called as internal acoustic foramen. The internal acoustic foramen transmits facial nerve, vestibular and cochlear divisions of the vestibulocochlear nerve and the labyrinthine vessels. Below and lateral to it is a depression called as the subarcuate fossa. At the upper part of the subarcuate fossa will be a canaliculus. This canaliculus is also called as the aqueduct of the vestibule and it transmits the endolymphatic duct and sac. On the anterior wall of the jugular foramen will be another opening called as the aqueduct of the cochlea that transmits the perilymphatic duct which will be better seen in norma basalis.